It's just a choice. Everything is just a choice. I keep hearing people say, oh, I had no choice, mate. I had to do it. We never have no choice. We have choices we like to make, choices we'd rather not make, but we never have no choice. It's a cop-out. And some people find it very difficult to take this on because it's much easier in their own mind to blame someone for what happens in our lives. Much more of a challenge to say, hey, I've created this. I'm responsible for it. But when you do, you stop creating what you don't like and you start creating what you do. The social order as we know it is created out of ideas, either directly or as a systemic consequence. In other words, somebody somewhere did something which generated a group interest. Once a given set of ideas are entrusted by a large enough group of people, it becomes an institution. And once that institution is made dominant while existing for a certain period of time, that institution can then be considered an establishment. Institutional establishments are simply social traditions given the illusion of permanence. In turn, the more established they become, the more cultural influence they tend to have on us, including our values and hence our identities and perspectives. While there is always a debate about genetics and environmental influence, it's very easy to understand in the context of values. Every intellectual concept which each one of us finds merit with is the result of a cultural information influence. The environment is a self-perpetuating programming process. And just like designing a software program for your computer, each human being is advertently and inadvertently programmed into their worldview. Every word you know has been taught to you one way or another, and thus every concept and belief you have is a result of this same influence. Jacques Fresco once asked me, How much of you is you? The answer, of course, is kind of a paradox. For either nothing is me, or everything is me when it comes to the information I understand and act upon. Information is a serial process, meaning the only way that a human being can come up with any idea is through taking in dependent information that allows that idea to be realized. We all must try to understand what is happening. We need to try to understand what is happening. And in my humble opinion, Ideology is only going to get in your way. Nobody understands what is happening. Not Buddhists, not Christians, not government scientists, not, you know, no one understands what is happening. So forget ideology. They betray, they limit, they lead astray. Just deal with the raw data and trust yourself. Nobody is smarter than you are. And what if they are? What good is their understanding doing you? And people who walk around saying, well, I don't understand quantum physics, but somewhere somebody understands it. That's not a very helpful attitude toward preserving the insights of quantum physics. Inform yourself. What does inform yourself mean? It means A, transcend and mistrust ideology. Go for direct experience. What do you think when you face the waterfall? What do you think when you have sex? What do you think when you take psilocybin? Everything else is unconfirmable rumor, useless, probably lies. So liberate yourself from the illusion of culture. Take responsibility for what you think and what you do. Now folks, I just want you to keep an open mind. You know, I'm not asking you to believe this. I'm sharing information with you. And if you choose not to believe it, hey, that's fine. I ask you to exercise your free will. You can absolutely leave. I will not be offended. I, I've already checked. None of these chairs have seat belts. We're literally going to create our own demise because we're buying into belief systems that say we ourselves are not mature enough or grown up enough to take care of our own selves. So we need somebody to come in here and take care of us. And I'm not here to offend anybody, but really think about it. Really think about 
you know, what we've done and, and what our history has been. You know, we've been to this place so many times before, and we still haven't gotten it right. And we're still not going to get it right unless we do it as a race and just cut out all the crap. And right now, we have an opportunity. There is a window of time for us to break free, and we have to wake up, period. I find conditions as they are unacceptable. And I find no threat in social change. And people have to lose confidence in their elected leaders. We have to assume responsibility. If not, I fear the consequences. So what is the matter with us? Why are we so perverse? What is it that drives the inertia of these dominator systems? Shouldn't we consider in every nation major changes in the traditional ways of doing things, a fundamental restructuring of economic, political, social, and religious institutions. The stupidity of a nuclear arms race, the development of weapons, trying to solve your problems politically by electing this political party or that political party, that all politics is immersed in corruption. Let me say it again, that all politics is immersed in corruption. And, you know, even the monetary system, it's just a belief system. You know, the only value on it is what we believe it is. We could change that tomorrow if we wanted to. I mean, we're so intelligent, we could create something different. We have the brains, the know-how, the technology, and the feasibility to build an entirely new civilization. And it doesn't make any sense. Why are we so patient when our world, our children's world, the world of all future life on earth hangs in the balance? I believe our only hope for the future is to adopt a new conception of human ecology. One in which we start to reconstitute our conception of the richness of human capacity. Our education system has mined our minds in the way that we strip mined the earth for a particular commodity. And for the future, it won't serve us. We have to rethink the fundamental principles on which we're educating our children. We want to create a real future where our kids will have an opportunity to be whatever they want, to live in an environment that's, that's, that's clean, that's free, where they can have water to drink. And our task is to educate their whole being so they can face this future. By the way, we may not see this future, but they will. And our job is to help them make something of it. Uh, as long as we uh, accept the temporary solution, the problem will go unsolved. It'll be solved for you and me right now, but not for our children. There are no Negro problems, or Polish problems, or Jewish problems, or Greek problems, or women's problems. They're human, human problems. problem, not an American problem or a Negro problem. And as a human problem or a world problem, we feel that it should be taken out of the jurisdiction of the United States government and the United States courts. And that's it. We're gonna, we need to stand up as a race exercise our free will and say, you know what, we don't want to live this way anymore. And this is what has to be done on a societal scale. And it is not as difficult as, as we may wish to be assured by the establishment. We talk about civilization as though it's a static state. And there are no civilized people yet. It's a process that's constantly going on. We're not civilized, it's an ongoing process. As long as you have war, police, prisons, crime, you're in the early stages of civilization, what they call civilization. Until you realize that you are symbiotically connected to nature, and that nature is an emergent process where you have to change constantly, where you realize that you being dogmatic about any point, any point of knowledge is inherently destructive. Once you realize that, you can begin to see a different world where there's ego and bias, all of these things begin to fade because there's no such thing as static knowledge or information. So most people don't even understand how easily we're influenced by our environment. Every person that we encounter, every single situation that we're faced with, every little word that's said on television may not seem too influential to our, to our conscious minds, but your unconscious is designed specifically to let every environmental signal influence you without your awareness. And yet here we are literally creating all this. That's how powerful we are. That's how powerful our minds are. 
which is why there's been so much focus on brainwashing, on trying to make us victims or believe that we're victims. Because the minute we wake up and we take a step back, detached, and see our situation for what it really is, they've lost control. It ends there the minute we awake. We believe that our problem is one not a violation of civil rights, but a violation of human rights. Not only are we denied the right to be a citizen in the United States, we're denied the right to be a human being. The time is really coming when people are going to have to stand up and be counted. I think humanity is now in a, what I call a final exam as to whether we qualify to stay here. And I'm not talking about a, uh, political leaders. I'm not talking about a religious leaders. I'm talking about humanity. This is the most serious business that we could be about. This is what we were born to do. And I, for one, am not ready to stand mute witness to that kind of an atrocity. We're going to do this thing just as the automobile phased out the stagecoach, just as television stepped in and phased out the old vaudeville and the old motion pictures, that history and technology is respecters of no society, no individual opinions, but it moves on. And we've got to be prepared to face the future. And so it's possible to figure things out. We can do science, and with it, we can improve our lives. Application of the methods of science, not scientists, the methods of science to the social system. Naturally, even the methods of science undergo change. And as they change, so would the future. You know, science has means of giving food, clothes, and shelter packed to everybody. Hmm? So the point here is tremendously perverse misdirection of resources, a tremendous patience with institutions that have proven that they are either ineffective or actually the enemy. So it comes back to people taking personal responsibility for what they think, what they want to believe, and what it is that they want to create. So what is needed is uh, an awakening. A transformation of the mind. And we are the generations, strange as it may seem when you survey the world today, we are the generations I passionately believe who are going to love the world into the paradise it really should be and was always designed to be. Changing the world is not something in the future anymore, or hoping it to be better for the kids. It's here and now. A new consciousness is developing which sees the earth as a single organism and recognizes that an organism at war with itself is doomed. We are one planet. Why do you have to pay to live on a planet you were born on? Now is the time. Now is definitely the time to make some changes. And I know you guys are. You know, I know, I know you're so dedicated that you've made the time and put the resources together to come here to hear the speakers, to make the changes within yourself, to share this stuff with your friends and share the DVDs. I know that. We have an opportunity here to create a new paradigm, a new domain of knowing. It just takes the leadership. You're going to be the ones that are going to stand there in your communities and say, look, this is what's been going on. This is what it is, and this is what we have to do. It's no accident that you are who